You know, I'm looking out at this hole, I'm wondering if we're a little late for the groundbreaking. Well, six years back, uh, the idea came up for a, a new arena. Spring of 2003, I was sitting in a conference room out on the Nike campus, and Phil Knight came in and said, Bob, when's the last thing, what's the last thing you did, have done for your university? And I said, well, nothing. We're going to start the process of building up, and we're going to pull this thing right out of the ground and, and get this, uh, this vision that the architects have put together uh, and put it into reality. Oregon Athletics, we provide the best for our student athletes, the best academic experience, without a doubt the best coaches, and clearly the best facilities. The first thing we did is we spent a lot of time traveling around the United States looking at lots of different arenas. When we initially started this project again sort of back in 03, Maryland was our benchmark. That was kind of the newest, nicest. But since then we've opened a number of buildings including the University of Virginia and you have projects like SC. We went down and looked at Galen. So we've, we've constantly stayed fresh with what's out there for trends or where the competition is. What we want to do here is build a world-class theater for basketball. I mean, that's always been our goal from day one. Theater for sport. You know, this has to be the most dramatic place to watch basketball. When we reactivated the project in earnest two years ago, that was right about the time the Beijing Olympic Stadium project was going on. And when we had that first sit down with Phil and, and Bob and I to talk about vision, he said, I want a, a building that has the same impact as the bird's nest. That was the bar that he was going to measure us against. One of the things that always struck me odd about most of the arenas that we toured was the fact, uh, much like Matt Court, they were these kind of concrete vaults with very little transparency. And you would have 12,000 people, 15,000 people with all this incredible energy and excitement uh, kind of contained within these solid walls. We really wanted to for the building to really retail all that energy out, really uh, open itself up. So we kind of started looking at the building as kind of a building within a building. So the outer building, the beauty of that is that we could make that very open, very transparent. You see all the people, all of the energy, you know, so the building is really playing back out to the street. The lower bowl section is steeper than the pit and the, the first tier at Matt Court. So if you're used to uh, you know, two-thirds kind of a position seat at Matt Court, you will have that level of sight line and a little bit better. It was always raise the bar. This is not good enough. This is challenge. We got to do it better. We got to do it better. You know, Jim, Jim Bartko really was the champion for that seating bowl. Man, it's got to be steep. It's got to be steep. You got to do it better. Show me where it is. Can we make it better? Can we get it just a little bit more? We, we purposely kind of cocked the building diagonally on the site so that uh, it had a very strong alignment to Hayward Field, to Oregon Athletics, you know, and at the same time this is going to play a key pivotal role in terms of creating a new entry on the University of Oregon campus. How tight and how close and how loud and how much can we really push the limits? You know, how much space do we give the cheerleaders now? How much can we tighten up the building and maybe get them a little bit closer to the floor and bring the fans a little bit closer to the floor? And the donors can be a part of that. They're right there. There was the constant desire to push the envelope, to make it steeper, to can We've looked at options that have, you know, cantilevered decks and tried to get people into that Mac court feel of being on top of the court. I think if they found a way to use pulleys and, and hangers, they would have suspended the fans over the top of the court and allowed them to shake the scoreboard themselves. So now we've got the combination of the steepest seating bowl, frankly, we've ever done in 30 years with the tightest geometry we've ever done in a building that doesn't have the energy gaps, suites and things that take away from the experience that other buildings have. So it's literally 12,500 people jammed as close to the floor as we could fit them so everybody can see. Over the next 24 months, we're probably gonna end up with an average at peak of 450 to 500 people working on site. You know, with the economy the way it is, the chance to provide a huge, stable job market for this, this uh, community is just a really special thing, actually. It's fallen at the right time, I think, for the city of Eugene. It's phenomenal for me. I'm a 1977 graduate from the architecture program here. To be able to be a part of this facility is a very, very meaningful uh, experience for me personally. I, I can't believe it. I had to be here. I actually had to walk on site today to believe it was really happening because it's been a long road. A lot of, a lot of water under the bridge, a lot of you know, personal experiences and hard work and blood, sweat and tears for everybody. And uh, yeah, it's it's really cool to be here today and see it all coming coming true. So, 
I don't know how many thousands of phone calls we've had in six years about this project, both good and bad. It's had its ups and downs, but to be sitting here today and to get to uh, really officially break ground on this facility, it's a proud special moment. Now it's time to put it in the ground and make it real.